Hi, welcome back to video two. If you missed the first one, well, there's a replay. You can watch that. Uh, but just very briefly, what we talked about last time was how uh, there's a phase, there's a, a, a process uh, that we've got to follow if we're going to see the dream, the destiny, the purpose for which God created us to actually come to pass. And we talked about how that first phase is that we've got to be willing to die. And so I encourage you to go back and watch that if you didn't get a chance to. Today I want to talk to you about the next phase, which obviously if there's a death, there's got to be a resurrection. And, uh, you know, Paul, I think, so eloquently described what this looks like in Galatians 2.20. He said, I've been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. See, Paul talks about this life after the cross. So many of us, we are still living on the wrong side of the cross. You know, Jesus talked about how we've got to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow him. And that's absolutely true. But what he was, he wasn't saying that in that, that we should constantly not look for what the Lord is wanting to do in our lives through us, okay? Um, folks that, that are living on the wrong side of the cross, you are still worried about, oh, I've got to deny myself this. You know, I, I can't do this because I like it. You know, oh, I really love doing this, but you know what? I really can't do that because I've got to deny myself. No. See, the, the good news is that after you have been crucified with Christ, you are raised to new life. You get a new nature. <laughs> Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, right? If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. They died. Behold, new things have come. So we, we have this awesome new nature. We have a heart that's been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit lives in our heart. So, you know, the way God created us, how he created us, our, the uniqueness that each of us is, needs to be understood and celebrated because that's how God made us. <laughs> you know, it's like we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And so we need, to, we need to recognize that and say, well, okay, so who am I really now? You know, how do I live now as a new creature, a new creation in Christ? What does that look like? And so that's the process that we go through. And uh, what I've discovered is that our walk with the Lord goes through different phases of relationship with him. Because the Lord, I mean, all he's after is relationship. And for most of us, we start out in, in our walk with the Lord in what I would call a slave-master relationship. And, I mean, come on, think about it. When you first got saved, right, he's like you didn't want to make a move without checking to see if it was what the Lord wanted. You know, what, uh, what, what should I have for breakfast today? I mean, we all did that. It was because <laughs> just the wonder of being in relationship with God, you know, and having him in our lives, you know, and not wanting to disappoint him. So we would we would go that extra mile of just, okay, Lord, tell me what to do now. Tell me. And, and so it was very much we're going to, you know, wait and be told what we should do, you know, at any given moment of the day. And then from there, we, we kind of progressed. And as we grew in the Lord, we kind of got a feel for what it was like to know what what he wants from us you know we we kind of figured some of these things out and we began to see that the lord had given us certain gifts and you know that that there were certain things that that we you know like to do or we were good at you know in in, in the spirit and so we started to do that and we shifted into what i would call a a servant uh, or a, an employee employer type relationship <laughs> you know where we would we would basically lord okay i, I got you i know what you've called me to do and i'm i'm doing this for you i'm serving you and and what i do is so critical you know right now and i'm 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 going to try to do a good job for you okay then from there you know at some point most of us got this revelation that oh you said now that you want to be friends and so I can be a friend of God, you know, and that we sing that great song and, and we, we, we kind of move into another level of relationship with him as a friend. 
Well, I, I want to tell you that all those, those levels are good, but there's one more that I feel the Lord's really focusing very, very strongly on in this season, and that is sonship. He, you know, all the other ways to relate to him, they all have to do with how I relate to him. You know, the things that I'm doing, even as, even as a friend, I don't want to do anything to offend him and ruin our friendship, <laughs> you know. But as you move into a sonship role and understand that that's what he's really after, well, now it's like, oh, wow, I'm always accepted because he's my papa and he always loves me. And even if I mess up, it doesn't change anything. And, and the freedom that we begin to come into in that is just amazing. But, you know, one of the things that the devil has really used to keep us, keep a lot of us from the beauty and the joy of that sonship relationship is this thing called the orphan spirit. The orphan spirit, uh, you know, is a, is a high level principality that has been at work in the church probably from the beginning on some level because it it works to drive a wedge between you and the heavenly father it wants to convince you that somehow that god you know is to blame for all of your problems you know it, it works um, to cause us to look for answers outside of our relationship with papa and honestly isn't that what what uh, the original sin was that they were looking to have the answers apart from a relationship with God. <laughs> you know, it causes this distance between me and the Lord where I don't, I don't feel connected to him. I feel like, you know, that there's a separation, like there's something wrong with me and that he's not fully accepting me. So, you know, all these things are at work in us that keep us from having the kind of of intimacy, you know, with him as a son or daughter. And so getting through this phase into the next phase, which is revelation, where the Lord wants to just pour out on you who you really are, okay? You have an identity. You are known in heaven according to your heavenly identity, okay? You know, when, when, when the folks, the, the great cloud of witnesses, when they look down and they see each of us, they are able to see who we really are, okay? Because they, obviously, they're in the spirit realm and they can see very clearly the destiny, the purpose, the gifts, the anointing that we carry. So it's so important that we move into this, this next phase of revelation where we, we are understanding and accepting what God says about us, okay? Do you know how the Father sees you? You know, we all are concerned on some level with how others see us and how others, uh, you know, what they think of us. But the most important person <laughs> is the father himself. OK, and one of the things he does is he gives us descriptions of who we are, of how he sees us. And he does that through prophetic words. He does that through visions and dreams. He speaks to us constantly concerning how he really sees us, concerning what the future looks like that he has planned for us. You know, someone once said, I don't know who this was, but I love it. He said that, that God stands in your future and describes what it looks like and invites you to come and join him. <laughs> and that's what he's doing. So we're, we're in this process of having our mind renewed, having our mind conformed to what God really says about us, how he really sees us, right? Paul talks about that in Romans 12, that we're, we're not to be conformed to the world. We shouldn't be, uh, you know, molded by what the world thinks of us or what the world says about us, right? We need to be transformed by what the Lord says what his opinion of us is. His is the only opinion that matters. And the way that happens is through our minds getting renewed. Why? Because there's a, there's a power in agreement. <laughs> Whatever I agree with is going to affect my life because agreement is a spiritual thing. I, I'm either in agreement with what God says or I'm in agreement with what the enemy says. There's no middle ground. It just isn't. 
And, you know, if you don't believe me, well, try it out. <laughs> Start agreeing more with the devil, you know, and you'll see what I'm talking about. There, there's just, we have to realize that this is what the Lord's trying to help us to do, is to shift out of and to break off agreements with the things that are keeping us back, keeping us from moving forward. And so what I recommend to folks, and I share this with you freely, you need to start a heavenly journal. You need to have a record, a written record of the prophetic words, the significant scripture passages and promises that the Lord has spoken over your life, any visions or dreams that you've received. You need to have this all written down. Why? Because you need to be able to refer back to it. You need to know it. You need to, to be so familiar with what God says that it begins to change how you see yourself. Okay. So give that a try. And I look forward to speaking with you again in the next video as we get ready to launch the Dreams Factory. It opens on February 1st. And I'm looking forward to spending more time with you and, and really learning how all this fits for you personally and how you can move forward into that future that the Lord has for you. Be blessed.